Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. So today I am just coming back after being gone from YouTube for quite a while. I wanted to make a video. I've missed so many of you here in the vinyl community, people I get to talk to on a weekly basis. This has been a very difficult time, exhausting, exciting at the same time. My husband and I made the move from Kentucky and I'm now in, as you can see behind me, I am now in my new music room here in Florida. And I look forward to being able to make a video and showing you my new music room. But as of right now, it's just not there yet. I've still got a lot to do. Uh, I have artwork that is on a moving truck. You know, we've been here, we packed up two weeks ago. The moving truck arrived in Kentucky and took all of our belongings, except for my vinyl records and my stereo equipment, because I was too picky to let them handle that, and some artwork that we had for the house. But it's been two weeks and they still haven't delivered our furniture. So we are here and we don't have any furniture. And they said they'd take three to seven business days. And like I said, two weeks later, they don't even, still don't even know what to tell us. They don't know when our uh, furniture's coming. So we're kind of having to deal with that on top of everything that we've already been through. But I do have my record room because like I said, I didn't want movers touching my records. If something went wrong, I wanted to be able to blame myself for it. And I feel like my husband and I did a very good job with the exception of one thing maybe we shouldn't have done that caused some damage. I feel like we did a good job with the records. I want to show you what we did and I also want to show you what we did wrong so you can think about whether that's something you want to avoid. Uh, let's start off now though with showing you how I packed up the records. I used these U-Haul small boxes. And that's what I used. They were fantastic. So if you go with the small box, and I didn't even buy the heavy duty ones for this. My husband and I did spend the money and bought the U-Haul heavy boxes for the stereo equipment. We wrapped everything very, very carefully in bubble wrap. For my records, I just used their normal small box U-Haul boxes and they were fantastic. Now I did watch Steve Carlson it seemed like his move seemed to be a lot less stressful than ours. I watched him, he moved from Michigan to Colorado. He shared some of his tips and I used bubble wrap on the bottom of each box before putting my records in. And I feel like that was good. I didn't go overboard with bubble wrap, but I filled my records pretty full. Not that they were extremely tight and extremely heavy, but I put them in to where I felt like my records weren't going to flip back and forth. And when there was some looseness or a really valuable record, I added a little extra bubble wrap in between the slots there just to keep them protected. I used tape and put three different strips of tape at the bottom to hold the bottom of the boxes. I also used three tape, uh, pieces of tape just going over and over again at the top. So my husband and I, I actually did all of the boxing and I feel like all of my records look really good. We boxed them all up and we moved them ourselves. Cause like I said, I did not want to blame movers for whatever happened to my records. I wanted to be able to blame myself if something were to go wrong. So what we did was we put them on a U-Haul trailer and we put the shelves in first. And then we took the boxes of records and put them in the shelving uh, and just lined up the shelves with my boxes. The good part about that was that, you know, I, I worried about a lot of things when it came to moving my records. I worried about the heat in the trailer. I worried that I was just putting my records in an oven. But you know what? The trailer never got quite that hot and there was no direct sunlight on my records at all. And I feel like that is really the thing you need to really be careful about. Direct sunlight on records. While my records, I think, got warm, they didn't get to the heat 
where I feel like any of my records suffered any damage. And from what I can tell, everything looks really great. Uh, if something happens and I start putting records on my turntable and I see warps on records that never had warps before, I'll make a separate video and I will share that because I don't want anything like that to happen to me or to you. But everything looks really good. And the good part about putting the record boxes into the shelves of my record shelving. One thing I didn't even think about was as you are traveling, you will run into potholes and rough roads. That's just, that's just life, you know? And what I really liked about putting those boxes in the shelves and having that bubble wrap on the bottom, for one, when we hit the, um, pothole or whatever it was, the records really couldn't move a lot. They stayed in place. They didn't go up and down. If I was stacking the boxes on top of each other, I feel like that might have done some damage. It could have caused a box to turn over, you know, something like that. So keeping the boxes in the shelves and then putting things in front of those shelves kept my records in place. What I did not expect was that doing that and hitting the potholes and the shelving going up and down with all of the weight of my records on them actually damaged one of my shelves pretty badly to the point where my husband and I thought we're gonna have to replace this shelf. And when we went to replace the shelf, unfortunately, the style, the height, of that shelf was no longer available. So I was going to have to replace all of my shelves so that they all were the same height and everything looked the same. And I didn't really want to do that either. So my husband took a look at the shelf that got damaged and thankfully he was able to repair it. It was no longer compromised. He was able to do some things to it to make it strong again and fix it. And while I can still see little places here and there, um, my records cover up most of the damage and it's fine. So I would say overall, putting those boxes in and keeping those records protected was most important. Some of the records I have, you know, um, I, most of my records aren't that expensive, but if I went to replace some of my records, they would cost more than what a couple of bookshelves would cost. So. I, and some of them are just hard to replace. Some of them are treasures, in my opinion. And I know that's just my opinion, but I feel like some of my records are like my children to a degree, you know? Um, so I would much rather a shelf get some damage. Thankfully, my husband was able to figure it out. I wouldn't be able to. I'm not um, a handy person. So, I do have some damage on some uh, on one of my bookshelves, but he made it stronger. It's not going anywhere. My shelves aren't going to boom collapse. If it does, I'll make a video about that too, but that's not going to happen. So I'm very excited. I, uh, I can tell you that in the Florida home, one of the things was that we were renovating the floor and the whole house got painted and it just looks like now we have a, a totally different home. And I'm very, very happy with the renovation. So that's part of the good news. I'm in this music room looking at the walls and the floor. It looks great, but there's still some more things we've got to do. Uh, and before I can make a video and show you this new music room, my first music room I've ever had, um, we're going to have to buy an area rug to help absorb the sound because we put a wood looking tile, ceramic, no, porcelain, I'm sorry, porcelain tile throughout the whole house. So I'm going to need some, an area rug. I'm going to need a couch because I want to have a sit down listening room. And I know this will sound disgusting to some of you because it does to my husband and my daughter. But I really just, my dream, this is what I want. I want to just be able to go to a Goodwill or an antique store and see an old couch that's very, very comfortable, but 
reminds me of a couch that we either had when I was a kid or someone I knew had back in the 70s. It, that's just what I want. And my husband and my daughter are like, ew, that's disgusting. I don't agree. I can clean it. And I just want it to be comfortable and I want it to look like something that I remember from my childhood because that's honestly a lot of my vinyl records and what I'm into. It's music that brings back wonderful memories and nostalgia. That's really what I'm all about. So I hope to find a very cool looking couch in the near future that is retro or at least retro looking, very comfortable. And I want it to be very cushiony so that it helps absorb the sound. I still have to do wall treatments and curtains in a way that helps absorb some of the sound. Putting in porcelain tiles adds a little bit of challenge for this room. And yet we just, the, the house when we bought it had six or seven different floors, different types of flooring. We wanted just everything to be exactly the same and in a very coastal vibe. That was what we were going for. The walls and the floor, very, very coastal. And now I've just got to be able to do the things that make this music room sound absolutely phenomenal. So before I go, I want to give a special thank you to someone who has been there for me through thick and thin that I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for my vinyl channel. And it's Mike from Nebraska. He is such a good friend of mine. We talk on the phone, we share what we have found recently, our recent finds when it comes to vinyl. We talk about music, a little bit about everything. He sent this wonderful t-shirt my way, John Anderson. And of course, John Anderson, you all know, is from the band Yes. Um, there's another country artist named John Anderson, but I'm talking about from the band Yes. And he's just an amazing artist. And my husband, who doesn't really have a lot of opinions when it comes to vinyl or music, I can't tell you how many times when we're listening to uh, an album by Yes, like Owner of a Lonely Heart, um, Roundabout, he, he doesn't give a lot of compliments, but he always says, I think this guy's voice is so good. And that's just a huge compliment when it comes to my husband. And Mike was able to go to this John Anderson concert. He was able to meet John, get his autograph. And thankfully he was kind enough to purchase one of the tour t-shirts and send it my way. So I really appreciate it. And I will show some of the records he also sent to me in a future video. So, and really, honestly, that's just what it's all about. I have met so many amazing people through my vinyl channel. Uh, I wanna say also a, a thank you to Michael. There's a guy here in Florida named Michael, and he always cracks me up with some of the jokes he's able to make in the comments that I just really love. So there's just so many people out there, so many of you who really brighten my day every week. You have truly been missed by me. And I'm looking forward to get back on my Tuesday time slot and be able to get back in here in the vinyl community, make videos, talk to you, watch vinyl videos. I have missed this so much. I'm so ready for my life to get back to normal. And so with that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm getting close to the 30,000 subscriber mark, which, you know, I don't really pay that much attention, but I think that's a huge milestone. I look forward to getting to that point. Please like the video. Leave a comment, what record do you think I should listen to first in my music room? And most importantly, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.